What's up guys, Dave Leader 1, 2, and 2, and it's teaching day! We haven't done one of these in a while, so I figured, hey, we might as well get back to it, because I at least want to finish off all the summoning mechanics, as well as any other miscellaneous rules I'd, I'd like to go over. I'm going to preface this video with, uh, if you hear a whistle in the background, it's because there's a police officer at the intersection across the street directing traffic due to some construction. I can't do anything about it. I'm sorry. There'll probably be tons of horns, too. Can't wait. And today's video is going to be going over the Pendulum Summon. For any of the people trying to get back into the game after a long hiatus, or they're just learning how to play, maybe they learned on Duel Links first, uh, <laughs> Pendulum summoning might be the most out-of-left-field mechanic we have because everything else kind of tends to play a very similar way, like you get a couple guys on board, you send them to grave as material for an extra deck summon, and then you, you, you call it a day. However, your pendulum summons are certainly one of the weirder ones at our disposal. Before we get into it, just uh, if you guys have any questions after the video, you can either put them in the comments section below or in the description. There's a link for my Discord. It's probably the better place to, to go because you have me and everyone else, including Ryan and, and, and Kieran and, and Mary and all the other people who run the, uh, run the Discord. So you can get all the help that you want there. And in that description, you'll also find uh, links to my Patreon and my Facebook and a bunch of other stuff. And today we actually have a new sponsor. TCG Player has decided that it'd be really cool if I started, uh, you know, doing them a solid by advertising their website for Yu-Gi-Oh! players. So if you guys are getting back into the game and you want to see what's new, head down to that link in the description below so you can buy all the new Yu-Gi-Oh! cards after you watch the video. And as always, if you want a custom cloth playmat, I also have the link down in the description below for Metamats, so that you too can look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> Without further ado, Pendulums! First thing we need to go over is what is a Pendulum Monster? Pendulum Monsters, like every other monster type in this game, is color-coded so that it's easy at first glance to tell exactly what kind of thing it is. Pendulums are really strange in the fact that their artwork is actually larger than normal cards and their cards are split into two colors. One is the color of a spell card, and we'll explain why in a sec, and the other is the type of monster it is. Traditionally, they are either normal or effect monsters that are main deck monsters, but we do have some special cases that are things like Fusion and Synchro and Exceed. The other thing that defines a Pendulum card is its Pendulum scale. There is a red and blue scale on your Pendulum cards, and when they are played as a Pendulum scale, again, we'll go over this in a sec, those are the stats you care about. There is a corresponding red and blue Pendulum scale on the board here, However, at this current time when the video came out, every single Pendulum Monster's red and blue scale are identical in number. However, it stands to reason if we were ever to get a lopsided Pendulum Monster where one scale was different than the other, it would most likely correlate to which zone you put it in, the red or the blue one. One would assume. So that's it. That's a Pendulum Monster. Cool. What can you do with them? Well, uh, when you enter your main phase one, you are automatically bestowed two kinds of summons, no matter what deck you're playing. One normal summon and one pendulum summon. Most decks, unless they're playing pendulum monsters, can't utilize the one pendulum summon you get every turn. However, you know, it, you technically could if you somehow managed to, to steal a bunch of cards from your opponent or, or something. I, I don't know, it, it, irrelevant. But yes, you're allowed to pendulum summon once per turn. How do you do that? What makes the Pendulum Monster special is that, like I showed you before, it is both a spell, hence the half of it being a spell card color, and the other half is a monster. If you were to, from your hand, place a Pendulum Monster into a Pendulum Zone, it acts like a face-up continuous spell card, and it goes into one of the uh, appropriate Pendulum Zones. If you have two monsters in your Pendulum Zone whose Pendulum Scale are different, you can now perform a Pendulum Summon. It is considered an inherent summon, and you can get monsters from your extra deck that are pendulum monsters that are face up there, which, again, that's something else we'll go over, or from your hand. The only stipulation is that the level of the monsters you are pendulum summoning must be between the, the two pendulum scales you have. So therefore, if you have something like a scale 4 and a scale 6, the only thing you can pendulum summon are level 5 monsters. You cannot pendulum summon monsters whose level equals uh, the, one of the scales only in between. And like I said, you can do this from your hand or your extra deck if you have face-up pendulum monsters in your extra deck, which, again, I will go over in a sec. And you can do this as, as, as many monsters as you want. 
as long as you have the proper extra deck zones if they're coming from the extra deck. Now this sounds a little complicated and I hope I'm making it clear because it's, like I said, it's, it's a really strange thing. But let's just say, for instance, you have a scale 1 and a scale 8 on your board. They were in your hand, you placed them to the board as pendulum scales. In your hand, you have a 4 and a 7. And in your extra deck, you have a face up 4 as well. You go to pendulum summon. You may play the two monsters from your hand to the main monster zones on your board, and you can play the extra deck monster that was sent there to a viable extra deck zone. In this case, it's the it's the the, the one you start off with. And you can do this for as many open zones as you have. So let's say you have a bunch of Link monsters on board bestowing you a bunch of extra deck zones. You can Pendulum Summon more than the one monster from your extra deck. And, and that's a Pendulum Summon. You can do that once. Now, how do you get those weird face-up extra deck monsters? Well, the only thing that can be face up in your extra deck traditionally is a pendulum monster. When pendulum monsters would be sent to the graveyard from the field, instead of going to the grave, they go to face up to your extra deck. So if you tribute them, or they're destroyed, or they're sent from the field to the graveyard, they go face up in the extra deck instead. It's a, a way to recur them again so you can pendulum summon them uh, another time, presumably. Let's you get free resources. If you're summoning from the extra deck, you do need to be able to put that monster in a viable extra deck zone. So if you have more than one in your extra deck and you only have one open zone, you can only pendulum summon from your extra deck one monster. And the level restriction between your two scales applies to extra deck monsters as well. Oh boy, I really thought this would be a lot easier to explain. Um, this mechanic is very strange. But that really is all there is to it. However, there is some interesting uh, special cases that I should at least mention so that you just, you know, you at least have some sort of bearings when you're trying to problem solve deck building and, and, and game states and things like that. Number one, if something like Macrocosmos is on board and it's preventing monsters on the field from going from the field to the graveyard and banishing them instead in this case, they will not go to the extra deck. They'll get banished. They must be destined for graveyard in order to go to the extra deck. If, if there's something preventing them from doing that, They'll just do whatever it is that the card is preventing them, or whatever. Also, if you overlaid to make an Xe summon for with uh, two of your Pendulum monsters and detached for the effect of the Xe monster, you uh, that goes to the graveyard, not to the extra deck, because it holds to that field to the graveyard uh, uh, rule, and Xe materials are not considered to be on the field, so they do not go to the extra deck. Okay, cool. You will also notice there are several Xe uh, Synchro and Fusion Pendulum Monsters as well. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well how does that work because they can't be main deck monsters because they're Fusion Xe and, and Synchros, what do I do? Well, uh, every one of them is different, they all have their own summoning conditions and they will explain to you on the card how they work, but in general you must properly summon them from your extra deck just like any like regular Fusion Synchro or Xe. And then, uh, if you want to use them as a pendulum scale, traditionally they have some sort of effect that when they die or whatever, they go to a scale instead of the grave. So that's how you get them over there. Otherwise, they would, you know, just go to back to your face-up extra deck just like they were. Any other uh, uh, pendulum monster. Again, they are very card-specific, but generally the only way to get them into a pendulum scale is to have them go there by effect. What are some interesting things about it? Well, uh... It isn't true for every single Pendulum monster, but like I said, when you play them as a Pendulum scale to a Pendulum zone, they are treated basically like a face-up continuous spell card. And you'll actually notice that a lot of Pendulum monsters actually have a green effect. This is their Pendulum effect, meaning that when they are in a Pendulum zone, they can actually act like a face-up spell card with some sort of ability. That ability doesn't work when they're in a monster zone or in your hand, because they are a monster by default, not a spell card until they're in the zone. But when they're placed in a pendulum zone, they might get themselves an ability. So that's that's kind of cool. And if they were an effect monster in the, like, the main monster zone or in your hand, that monster might actually have uh, some dual purpose and some versatility because it depend it, its effect changes depending on whether it's a monster or a spell. I guess uh, interesting things about scaling a card... Uh, when you place a, a pendulum monster from your hand to a pendulum zone, you, know, you can't just like put one over another. You can't like do it like a field spell. So if one it's there, it will stay there until it's removed by some other means. You can't inherently replace one uh, unless there's some sort of strange effect preventing you from doing this. You play them just like a spell speed one normal face up continuous spell. So you just slap them down. You don't really there's no trick to it. You just 
that, then it's a scale. And, uh, oh, and you can't set a pendulum scale. Uh, basically, you can't, like, put a monster face down in your pendulum zone uh, that's a pendulum monster and, like, you know, have a set scale. You can't do that. Which means uh, cards like Anti-Spell Fragrance, which makes you have to set your spells and traps before you activate them, pretty much prevents you from playing pendulums because you're not allowed to set a pendulum monster as a in the scale and this thing makes you have to, to, to set your, your spells so now you're just in this weird scenario where you simply can't make a game action. It's, it's a pretty good floodgate against pendulum decks. They simply can't play a scale. And finally, I guess uh, make sure if you're playing a pendulum deck, be careful where you put your back row, like your Solemn Judgments and other type trap cards, because if you put one in the uh, pendulum zone, because it is a viable, perfectly good, normal spell or trap zone, uh, you're blocking yourself out of play, so be, just be careful with that. Cool, so that's the basics of pendulum summoning and how to use the deck. Now, if you want to play a pendulum deck, what are your options? Uh, if you were had a time machine, you'd go play, you know, Performer Pale uh, Pepe, I guess, but uh, if you're watching this video in like the around the time it came out, your options are probably something like Pendulum Magicians or Zephyrus. Advantages, uh, Pendulum Magicians has an absolute ton of support. There's uh, many ways of building the deck, like using Odd Eyes and, and the, the other, uh, you could probably put Perform Pales in there. It, it tends to mesh well. There's a lot you can do with it. It's a, it's a very uh, malleable deck, given a format. And then your other option would be your Zephyrs. Zephyrs are uh, interesting. Every monster in the deck is from the Zephyr archetype, but they're also from other archetypes. They're all dual archetypes, so you can use some of the uh, deck-specific support in that deck if you really want to, to make it kind of work. Uh, and it searches its, uh, its negation trap card, so there, it's got that going for it. it. It can put up a really solid board as well as uh, it searches its back row, so that's, that, that's pretty solid as well. Alright, well, uh, while that intersection is being quiet for the next three seconds, I might as well end the video here. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any questions, as well as check out the Discord and the other links you got there. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I will, uh, I'll see you guys next time. The Destiny Board tells me that you should subscribe to the channel, or you can watch some of these other videos. Now excuse me, my Millennium Ring has detected another Millennium Item. Oh, it's... it's just Merrick. Akora, did you remember to get milk? We're out of milk. This milk is bad. It was terrible.